I'm Jennifer, the host of Avid Achievers, and joining me today is Keith Mills, where we're talking about guest speaking with the Avid program. Hi, Keith. Thank you for joining me today. It's a pleasure being here. Now, Keith, we met several years ago at a parent-teacher conference when your daughter, Allie, was in fourth grade. And then our paths crossed again probably seven or eight years ago when I became involved with the AVID program. And for the last several years, you and I have worked together where you've come out and guest, have been a guest speaker to several of the um, schools with the AVID program. And I'm wondering what other opportunities and experiences have you had working with students before? Well, one thing we're doing right now with uh, Ray Rice of the Ravens, we call it Ray of Hope, is uh, an anti-bullying campaign, which has gotten a tremendous amount of uh, response from both the parents and the students around the area. Uh, we don't do as much in the football season because he's kind of busy, but we'll pick that up at the end of the season. Uh, I was fortunate enough to coach uh, baseball and soccer at Cardinal Gibbons when my son was there for four years. I still coach uh, amateur baseball in the area. It is a tremendous uh, way for me to reconnect with the students around town and uh, a lot of high school kids. Uh, and, and this, the AVID program thing has been wonderful for me. Well, and we really appreciate it. And I'm always amazed whenever I email you and I'm like, hey, Keith, can you come out to this school at this time? You never say no. You know, you always find time in your schedule. And I realize that being a sports broadcaster, it's not just you sitting behind the desk in front of the camera or in front of the, you know, in front of the microphone for a couple of hours a day. I mean, you're out on the field, you're out at sporting events, you're interviewing people. But what motivates you to take the time out of your schedule to talk to students? Well, uh, when I was in high school, my mentors, teachers, and coaches did that for me, and this is a chance to give something back, to go out and maybe make a difference if I, c if I can in a student's life or, or a group of students' lives. And, um, you know, I have a tremendous amount of respect for the teachers in this county. Went to school in, in, in Anne Arundel County Public School at Brooklyn Park High School, and this is a way to give back. This is a way for me to maybe reconnect and show the students that there is a uh, interesting uh, profession out there called communications, TV, radio, sports broadcasting, and maybe uh, trigger a little passion in that in their in their lives. So uh, I love it. It's fantastic. Well, I know that we benefit greatly from it. So again, I appreciate that. Now, when you go out and talk to the avid students, I know that um, you're kind of you partly talk about careers and then you give like this motivational speech interwoven in it and one of the things that you discuss is the importance of having a plan B in life I know that there's a lot of students that want to be professional you know athletes and sometimes they're good enough and sometimes they're not and I really think that it's important for that plan B my name in case you're wondering is Keith Mills I'm a sportscaster at WBAL TV 11 channel 11 WBAL AM 1090 radio and 98 Rock. The Ravens arrived back in Baltimore about an hour ago from Houston. They come home with a 9 and 4 record thanks to an absolutely unbelievable game last night. 34 28. They win in overtime after watching a 28 7 lead vanish in the second half. Ray Lewis back on the Monday night stage, and for one half, he and his teammates dominated. Second quarter, Joe Flacco to Derek Mason. Bobbles keeps his feet inbounds. He missed a wide open deep pass earlier in the game. We'll see it again after the chest bump with Anquan Bolton, and yes, it is a touchdown. All right, we're going to stop it right there. Do you get an idea? Do you get an idea of what we do on TV right now? Did you see the energy level? Give me some of your thoughts. You may get energized to keep people tuned in to see what's going on. Thank you. That's my job. Yes. Um, you were excited. I was very excited. If you want to play high school and college sports, let me tell you what you need to do. You need to work hard because someone else out there is doing the same thing. They're hitting the weights, they're running sprints, they're working on their conditioning, they're working on their skill level. How many lacrosse players do we have here? You play, you, how long have you been playing? Uh, well, I was little. I've played since I was like three. Fantastic. Good for you because everybody in Baltimore County that goes to McDonough and goes to Bryn Mawr and goes to these nationally ranked programs, they're playing when they're six, seven, eight years old and they're playing every day. Keith Mills here when he was younger played three sports in high school, football, basketball, and baseball. My best sport was baseball. I wanted to be a Major League Baseball player when I grew up. That was my dream. My junior year into my senior year, okay, I had just gotten back from Canada playing an international baseball tournament, walked in my high school gym to meet the football coaches. I was the quarterback of our football team my senior year. So it was the day of, first day of practice. My, my baseball coach, who was assistant football coach, a guy named Tim McMullen, he was the first athletic director at Broadneck High School. 
and I still talk to him to this day. He is a father figure to me, a mentor, a friend. I love that guy to death. But anyway, we sit down, and we're talking about football season. He goes to me, he goes, I want to talk to you about something really important. He goes, you want to play Major League Baseball, right? I said, yes, sir. He goes, you know, you understand how hard it is. I said, yes, sir. He goes, you know what? You are not good enough. That's exactly what he told me. You are not good enough to play Major League Baseball. What do you think of that? Not good. Not good. That's basically, I said something else under my breath, which he didn't <laughs> need to hear. But he's exactly right. Not good. The point of that was, guys, I left that meeting thinking, oh, my God. You know, why did he have to tell me that? Why do you think he told me that? Make me try harder in baseball? <laughs> Not really, but you're, you're real close. What's your plan B? <laughs> hey, guys, what's your plan B? And plan B is, if it, plan A doesn't work, if you want to be a, a musician, if you want to be an actress, if you want to sing, if you want to dance, whatever, and for some reason that doesn't work out, what are you going to do? So anyway, my interest was in journalism, okay? I wanted to be a sports writer. So I joined the school newspaper when I was in high school. And you know what? Everyone I knew, all my buddies I hung out with, I tried to hang out with all the cool guys and all that stuff, they laughed me right out of town. They laughed their tail off when they heard I was joining a school newspaper. School newspaper? What are you, crazy? Why are you doing that, man? All, for lack of a better word, the nerd word was big when I was in school. What are you, a nerd doing that? I was the only guy in a class with 15, 16 girls. I thought that was pretty good odds, don't you? <laughs> I liked it. So, <laughs> not only did I have fun and I learned something about journalism, I really met some, a lot of cool people. People to this day are my friends. My journalism teacher was the best teacher I ever had. She taught me so much about communication and being able to deal with adults and how you write and how you speak and all the things that I use today in my job. Isn't that amazing? how that works out. For that scenario, my plan B was journalism and communications. Now, was that something because your parents were involved in communications and broadcasting, or were there any other careers that you were interested in? Well, my father worked at Channel 13 for 40 years. He was there when he turned the station on. So I, would, I grew up in that atmosphere with Jerry Turner and Al Sanders. So when I got out of college, that opportunity was afforded me, TV sports broadcasting. But my other passion when I was in school was teaching. I, if, I was, if, I didn't, if I wasn't a sportscaster, I would without a question be a teacher. Love the interaction with the students. Very nice. And I know that it's really important for students, especially the AVID students, because as you know, we're working with students in the academic middle. And we're trying to give them study skills and you know, test taking strategies. But we also are focused on their future, because you know, it is important to do well in their school from ye one year to the next so that they can take advanced classes get accepted into a good college, but we want them to think about the choices that are out there for various colleges and various careers. And so when I go in like to a restaurant, you know, I don't just see people working at the restaurant. There's all different kinds of things that are involved in a restaurant business. You know, you have the people that are ordering the food, you've got the cooks, you've got the hostess, you have the people that are designing the restaurants. So there's a lot of different things that students aren't aware of. And in the AVID program, we really want people to come out with all different kinds of job experiences and talk to the students and get them thinking about other options. Now, thinking about the, the radio station and you know, the, the news station, what other jobs are involved that not only are what they see on the camera when they're watching TV, right. but what else goes on behind the scenes where people have jobs? Well, you have producers and directors. They coordinate everything. You have the cameramen and women that get the, that get the product on the air. You have audio people. You have um, uh, what we call switchers, that the technical directors, you have assignment editors, writers, a variety of people. There are 15 to 20 people who are directly responsible for me going on the air, whether it be TV or radio, every day. And one of the things that you talk about that you seem really passionate about when you're speaking to the AVID students as well is not being afraid to take chances, not being afraid to, if you even think you have an interest in exploring that. How many of you guys are afraid to maybe do something different and maybe if you're interested in music or art or athletics or reading or writing, you're afraid because you're worried about what your friend might be saying or what your girlfriend might be saying, yada, yada, yada. Is that true? 
Do you think about that fear of failure? You're worried about making a mistake instead of actually having fun and finding something out about it. Does that make sense? Every athlete, how many of you guys want to be athletes? Show me the hands. Let me tell you what, if you want to be an athlete and you want to play in college and you want to go to school and play sports, you have got to figure out a way to deal with failure. Who, who wants to sink? I heard some people that, yeah, that's fantastic. What's your name? Hey, let me tell you what, man, I, which, I'm serious. That's what I'm talking about. If, you know what, hey, he might be having a last laugh because I'm telling you, if he goes on and becomes a successful singer, good for you. Well done. What's your, what's your name? Marquise. Marquise. However he wants to do it. This isn't about you. It's not about you. It's not about you. It's about him. It's about him. What he wants to do has nothing to do with you guys. And what Victoria wants to do has nothing to do with anybody other than, hey, man, give her, give her the support. What the heck's wrong with that? I love that, man. I think that's fantastic. I'll tell you what, if I were hiring someone today and we had a job opening at Channel 11, he'd be one of the first guys I'd talk to. And I don't know anything about him. Just for the simple fact that he had the guts to put his hand up and say that, something that might not be, you know, to everyone else's liking. Good job. So anyway, that's my point. So go for it if you think it interests you. The second thing is effort. Right? If you're going to do something, do it the best of your ability, or don't do it. Don't waste your time. You know? But if you're going to do it, do it to the best you can. That's why I get up at 2 o'clock in the morning. You think I like getting up at 2 o'clock in the morning every day? No. no, thank you. I don't. But it's what I signed on for. And if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it the best I can. It takes a lot of planning to do what I do. i got two hours of production time in terms of editing, in terms of writing. I had to learn how to write a lot. I had to learn how to edit. I had to learn how to um, um, make, to tell stories. I had to learn how to delegate responsibility to the people I work with, the editors. Eric used to edit a lot of my stuff, and I used to give those guys cut sheets that they couldn't even read. It was like, it was because I was sloppy, but I had, to, I had to work on that. So anyway, you get my point, guys. Go for, go for it, what you want to do, and do it the best you can. My message to the kids today is the peer group, the peer pressure is as intense as it's ever been. Ray and I have found out in these anti-bullying rallies, it is extreme. Cyber bullying right now, cyber peer pressure, whatever. And my message to the kids is those peers and your friends that are telling you that that's not good or that's not fun or that's not cool are probably jealous and envious that you want to do something constructive and positive with your life. And I say it takes a little bit of courage to overcome that fear of maybe angering your peer group. But if you can do that, if you can overcome that courage, it is going to open up a variety of avenues for you and things that you can explore down the road, whether it be in high school or college. Jumping to adulthood, you know, you put yourself out there, you're up speaking in front of a lot of different people. What advice would you give people who are watching this show now that say, you know what, I think I have a career that I would love to share my experiences oh. with, but I'm not sure. I would say, Try to find a way where you can get involved. And you were telling me that there's a, the Anne Arundel County Public School website has the opportunity, has the ways to get that done. And I would say take a step back and think of all the people that helped you out when you made uh, the jump from, let's say, college to the professional world and you had some success. And then take another step back and say, well, how can I share that with kids today? And sharing it, you will find, is an unbelievably rewarding thing with the kids today. I don't know any of the kids we talk to, Jen, that don't want to have success, don't want to show their parents an A on the report card, or don't want to have some sort of, 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 of level of success where they can look in the mirror and say, I did that. I did that. And if we as adults can help channel that, oh, man, look at all the people we're going to try to help. That's fantastic. That's right. And Keith, again, you know, thank you so much for all of the time that you've dedicated My to pleasure. AVID throughout the years. Thank you. And thank you so much for being on the show today. Uh, I appreciate it. This program is wonderful, and we're having a great time doing it. Yes, we are. Thank you so okay. much. To find out more about the AVID program and how you can become involved in guest speaking, you can visit us on our website. There's an interactive link, and there's many different opportunities to become involved with the AVID program. Thank you so much for watching today, and please stay tuned when I talk with volunteers, students, teachers, and other guest speakers with the AVID program. Thank you.